Hmm. That was a busy one yesterday. Hopefully be a busy one today as well. It's half past six on the top of the hill. Oh, 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 it's, it's been a little bit wet. Now look at that. See that? That is a phone mast. So not only do I have a fantastic view over Chesil Beach, 50 yards away, and a clean toilet with very hot water 20 yards away. I have a mobile phone signal that is so ridiculously strong coming from 10 yards away, along with free parking at a quiet road in the middle of tourist country. So, top of Chesil Beach, by or top of uh, Portland, Bill, there's a big car park right next to the castle. Seven pound night, overnight stays. Just along from it, at the back of this hotel, where I can, I forgot to mention, where I can get coffees and hot breakfasts and all sorts, should I so desire. At the back of the hotel is free parking. Top tip. Today's Sunday, which, as you know, is a special day. Special Sunday. So, what this means for me on the road is, number one, bacon and eggs, which is still cooking. Number two, got, 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 got clean pants on. A new pair of pants, look. There you go. So that's good, because the other ones, so they were clean because I've been diving in them. I've been sitting in a kayak in them, but uh, I figure it's time to um, put new pants on. Since it's God's day, yeah, it's a holy day, it's a Sunday. So the coffee's ready, and the Ridge Monkey, which is going to get washed in the sink in a little while. Done me proud on that breakfast, look at that. Oh, six rashes of bacon, three eggs, luscious, salt and pepper too, that's what all the all the weird stuff on there is. So let's go on the plate. There was only really one place to choose to have my breakfast, and that's here. I'm driving around Portland looking for somewhere to go and dive. Uh, Chesil Cove, which is where I originally intended to go, is um, a bit iffy. The clarity isn't looking fantastic to the locals, or Mr. McCoy, although it is to me. However, uh, there's quite an undertow and the wind's basically coming from the wrong direction so I've now gone to have a look at Pulpit Rocks which is down by Portonville Lighthouse uh, driving around it's quite quite an odd island I'd have expected this to be sort of like no parking resident parking high charges and that all the time but actually it's pretty pretty good there's lots of free parking to be had there's Portonville Lighthouse as you can, well, no, you probably can't see, but I can see, there's some uh, white water out there, quite a lot of it. But anyway, I'm going to have a, a quick look here and see what the situation is. So, I don't think this is somewhere that's going to be diveable either. But anyway, we're having a little look at, at Portlandville Lighthouse while we're here. So that's not so bad. Obviously, parking would have to be paid for here, I'm guessing. There you go, look at that. I'm thinking that this is a no. So I need to look somewhere else.
well, it looks a lot better here, but I just don't know how I can get down to the sea. It's a lot calmer on the other side of the island. As you can see by the railings, we're somewhere. Look at that big wall. See those chimneys? That's HMP Portland. Also known, I think, as Borstal. So, if I can find the beach, it's going to be a Borstal breakout. Look at this wall, though. What a lovely wall. How do I get down there with all my dive gear? It's nice, though, look. That rocky, reefy stuff. I could get some nice food out of that. There's a harbour in the background. You can dive in the harbour, but you have to pay. And I think you have to go with a boat or something. I'm not sure. Can't work out what's going on. Well, there we go. It's taken me 48 years to get to Borstal. <laughs> Probably a bit old for it now. Kind of cool. Just been chatting to some people They came out. They got their, their VW. And uh, they just come out. They had one of these. That had about 250,000 on the clock. They went around New Zealand in. An ex-tour bus. They were really chuffed to see it, so... That was quite a nice little chat, but anyway. There's quite some structure here. Look at that. Big, big, big Victorian era. Look at that. That's really something. I think this is the high angle battery. Well I drove around for ages trying to find somewhere with access to the water that was fairly calm. Found absolutely nothing. Uh, did find a dive shop. So I've gone and got the cylinder filled. Check my regs, they're fine. Um, I'm seeing fine for now. It's absolutely hammering down the rain. I think today is actually going to be a bit of a write off weather wise. Um, I'll still stay overnight because I'm going to go see a couple of people tomorrow morning. And then I'll probably head for Cornwall then, depending on whether the wind shifts or not. Because with the wind in this direction, I'm stuffed. Well, I'm really stuck, so I've gone over to Bowley's Cove in the hope I might be able to get a dive there. But it's all chopped up. It doesn't look particularly clear, although it's clearer than at home. So I'll see how things go. I'm going to have a coffee and, and a roll and... I think, but that's an onshore wind, so I don't know. The waves are small. Maybe I'll see if it settles down later and go out. At least the rain has stopped for now. There's Weymouth Bay, Portland, it's back there where I was earlier, so I might head back out there to sleep tonight. Well, with the weather being a bit rubbish, I'm actually going to make my coffee and eat my lunch inside the van. I've also cheated and bought myself a tin of instant coffee, some Azera. It's got to be easier to be honest. Such a long time since I've drunk instant though. Well, I've had enough sitting around, lounging around, being uh, bored and tired. I've just had a three quarter of an hour nap. Um, middle of the day, it's about three o'clock. The weather's uh, a bit better, it stopped raining, so I'm going to have a wander down. I'm down at Bowley's Cove, I'm parked on a slope, so I'm just going to take a beer out of the fridge and wander down to the beach. Um, it's an onshore wind, it looks lovely down there, but uh, I don't think it's diveable. So tomorrow morning, if I can get a dive, great, if I can't, no matter. And I'm going to head over to uh, visit, visit Fladden HQ and Rachel and John, and then I'll um, start heading towards Cornwall, where it's gonna be pouring the rain. As you can see in here, it's really blowy up here, and I'm on quite a slope, so we're gonna head down there and have a look. Look at her sitting on the hill, good as gold. Look at that, it's a fun fair and everything. Love it. All those ships anchored up, cruise ships. Nuts, man. There's no air flag flying up there. And a 
it says here the Southwest Battle of Britain Memorial. So let's have a look what's occurring here. There's a lot of wreaths and flowers. French dedicated to 152 Hyderabad Squadron. Battle of Britain, Roll of Honour. Let's just move backwards slightly over the rocks. Hold 609 West Riding Squadron. They even got their own little section. Look, come to an angle. So we've got uh, Pit Baron, Buck Buchanan. Johnny Dundas, Alan Ferry, Jeff Gorm, Matt Goodwin, Wendy Miller, and Gordon Mitchell. Oh, what do you know? I wasn't expecting that. Well, that's marvellous. That's a lovely little memorial. Wasn't expecting to find anything like that down here. What can I find in my beach combing? Go, big bit of whelk shell. Can I find any sea glass? That's the question. A fair bit of weed washed up. But nothing major. Big bit of kelp here. Look at that. You can make a belt out of that. could eat it too if I knew how. Put you down. Yeah. Lovely old stuff. But it's blustery and there's no visibility, but it's still lovely here. So, Sunday dinner. What are we gonna have? Something special. Bit corned beef hash made with corned beef, brat kartoffeln from Home Bargains, baked beans, pepper, Leon Perrin's Worcester sauce, Red Leicester, done in the Ridge Monkey. I reckon that's going to be awesome. There we go. So I'm going to start by frying that all off in the Ridge Monkey. I haven't had corned beef in so long, so I'm really looking forward to this. I've put a bit of pepper on already. I'm going to close that down so it can uh, cook nicely in there. That will fry and that will um, bake or roast or whatever. So it's going to be great, hopefully. Now that is looking awesome. That's hot enough. I was hoping to sort of like brown off the potatoes a lot more and the corned beef a lot more, but there's quite a strong wind up here, as we know from earlier. But that's looking really awesome, so that's ready to eat. Also added in a little bit of Coleman's English mustard, which you didn't see earlier, just because I found it in the fridge. Cheese is in, all good. Oh man, that is that is really good. It may look like a mixture of shit and vomit, but I tell you, it tastes amazing. Um, mm, I'll still have spider crab or lobster or whatever by choice, but this is <laughs> this is really good. I don't know why I don't eat corned beef more often, but I'm gonna I'm gonna crack on with this along with me San Miguel. It's it's lovely. It really works. About two minutes has elapsed since the last clip, and it's all gone. I'll tell you what. I couldn't shovel it in fast enough. I mean that is oh, that was just amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lick the bowl clean. Mm. Oh, it was it was, mm. it was the best. It was the best. Now, where's my beer? Where's my beer? So, friends, Romans and countrymen, I shall bid you good night. Well, not just yet. Well, I'll bid you good night, my beer. I'll just tell you about my reading today. So, 
a proper classic. William Procknow's Once Upon a Distant War. Marvellous book. This is about the um, American correspondence in Vietnam. As you know, I'm very much into the American photojournalists and so on. This is the writers as well, so it's a different side of the story. And so far, it's absolutely cracking. So I've got a good selection of books to last me on my uh, month away. So to sit out the rainy days, I've got Quiet American by Graham Greene. Thank you, Abby. I haven't finished it. I will this time. I've got Sinarth, written by the veteran I met in Seam Reap, who got shot, blown up, and all sorts of stuff. Um, oh, God, I've got Lost Over Laos, about the loss of Larry Burroughs, Henri Way, and, um, oh, kind of Kent Potter. And I think uh, Kaiserbury Shimamoto was, was lost as well. So, yeah, Lost Over Laos. Uh, I've, got, I've got some cracking books. I've got You Never Know Your Luck, um, about Keith Ogilvy from 609. I've got Pierre Klossman's Big Show as well. So I've got some really good stuff to read. But for now, Once Upon a Distant War. So, now, friends, Romans and countrymen, I shall bid you good night.